I, Assistant Professor Pooja Sharma from Biani Girls College, welcome you all on the behalf of GuruKPO.com. Today, I am going to present the poetry, The Solitary Reaper, that was actually written by William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth uh, belonged from Romantic Moment and he is a nature poet. He has written a lot of poetry about the nature as we all know about the Tintin Abbey and the most famous work of uh, William Wordsworth is Lyrical Ballads that was actually published in 1798. Right, so here the poetry which we are having here, it is taken from poems, the two volumes uh, and it was published in, so this poetry which we are having here, The Solitary Reaper, it was uh, published in uh, poems in two volumes 18, in 1807. Right? So, uh, this particular poetry was also inspired by William Wordsworth's sister Dorothy's stay at Serthaya in Scotland. In this poetry, the solitary reaper William Wordsworth is talking about a lady. We come to the title here, the, the solitary reaper. Solitary is a person who is reaping alone. Right? So, reaper is a person who is harvesting the crop and solitary uh, word has uh, is denoting about the loneliness of that person who is sitting in the field and doing some work of harvesting. Alright? So, this poetry is actually uh, uh, used for the solitary reaper, a lady who has, has been reaping in a field of Sirthaya, it may be Sirthaya village or uh, it may be the village of Scotland. Right? So, uh, we are having this poetry here. I am going to start it. I am going to recite it. Right? Behold her single in the field, yon solitary highland less. Reaping and singing by herself, stop here or gently pass. Alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain. Oh, listen for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound. So now uh, the poet William Wordsworth is speaking in the first line of the poetry that behold her. He is asking the other people who uh, are just looking at the lady who is just reaping and harvesting in the field uh, and where she is lonely. Right? So he is saying that behold her. The poet is maybe he is asking the readers to behold the lady or the travellers who are passing by that uh, road where the lady was harvesting, right? So, he is saying the behold her, he is asking the travellers to look at the lady, to behold her, to look at her, to examine her, what is she doing? Single in the field, is because she is lonely in the field, she is single in the field and she is doing some chorus, what is she doing? Yon solitary highland less. Now, here he is mentioning the lady, yon is the word representing you, okay? Solitary is a person who is lonely, highlandless. So, it may be that uh, it is a highland. There might be some hills uh, at the uh, at that place where the lady is reaping. Less is here that this word has come from maiden. She, she is a uh, girl who is uh, doing some work in that field. So, he is asking uh, the travellers to, uh, who, who uh, are just passing by that road of the field and he asking, he is asking them to look at the lady, what is she doing and just to observe her. Next he says, reaping and singing by herself, stop here or gently pass. Then again he is asking uh, those travellers to look at the lady and reaping and singing by herself. What is she actually doing? doing? She is reaping, she is harvesting the crop and she is singing a very beautiful so song which is actually uh, not in the uh, 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 language which the Wordsworth is getting. Uh, as I have told you in the introduction uh, of the poetry that this was a place and the place was Scotland. So, it's uh, Scotland uh, people are actually speaking the Scottish, right, the Scots language. So, it may be that the lady was singing in the Scots language which was not understandable to the poet, right. Next, we move towards uh, <coughs> the poetry. Stop here or gently pass. Now, he is asking the travellers to stop at that particular field that you just stop here or you just pass from this place 
and he is uh, even asking the travellers not to disturb the lady as she is singing very beautiful and some uh, 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 very beautiful lyrics which are actually touching the soul of Wordsworth. Right? Next we move. Alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain. Alone, she is uh, again. He is uh, emphasizing on that word that alone. She is doing this activity alone. She doesn't need anyone else. He says she cuts and binds the grain. She is just how she has just uh, harvested the crop. And what actually the people do who are the harvesters? They are just cutting the crops in the field and they are uh, making a pile of it and uh, bringing it to some other place. It may be for uh, 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 like selling and for other works. So, uh, what is she doing? She cuts and binds the grain. She has harvested the crop and she has just uh, made a pile of that grain, right? And sings a melancholy strain. She is also doing another work. She is now here, here the melancholy word has come from sadness. The strain, uh, it may be like uh, the lyrics which she was singing, which was full of sadness, which was uh, uh, having a sad tune in itself, right? So, he's saying. Uh, and sings a melancholy strain and the lady was also singing a beautiful but a very sad tune as the people could hear very well. Then again uh, he says, oh listen for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound. Then he's asking the people, he's a little bit exclaimed at the voice of the lady that she was singing so much beautiful. He's emphasizing these words and saying, oh listen people, you travelers, you have to listen her, what you have to do for the veil profound. Now the veil has word, uh, veil word has come from belly. Okay, the lady where she might be singing, I have told you that uh, there was a highland place and the highland place is actually uh, surrounded by the valleys. Right, so profound means the echoing of the voice. Okay, so the voice of the lady that was uh, echoing in that valley, right, is overflowing with the sound and the valley was also overflowing. It was, uh, it, it could be heard that valley was getting profounded by the voice of the lady who was singing very sweet and sharp. Okay, it uh, it was a thing that she uh, whatever she was singing, her voice uh, or uh, sorry, her language was not understandable as she was singing in Scots and Wordsworth was not the known of Scots language, right? So here uh, he has uh, mentioned uh, this uh, the first stanza. So we are uh, finishing this first stanza here is overflowing with the sound that the <coughs> uh, uh, the voice of the lady that was uh, uh, too much profounding that uh, it was echoing in whole of the valley. Now we are having here the second stanza of the poetry that is no nightingale did ever chaunt more welcome knots to weary bands of travellers in some shady haunt among Arabian scents. A voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest Hebrides. Now here in this stanza, the poet is making a little comparison between the voice of the lady and between the voice of cuckoo and the nightingale. Here in this uh, stanza, we can have a, uh, like these particular things like the nightingale, we remember the ode to nightingale that was actually written by John Keats and here we, uh, if we uh, talk about the cuckoo bird, so the cuckoo bird is also a, a sign uh, which is having a very beautiful voice and that is soothing to our soul. So here he makes a comparison in this way he is using simile by making a comparison between the voice of the lady and the voice of the nightingale or cuckoo. He is here uh, in these lines, he is talking about that the uh, lady was actually singing more beautiful than these two birds, right? So here he is saying, no nightingale did ever chaunt more welcome notes to weary bands of travellers in some shady haunt among Arabian sets. He says, no nightingale did ever chaunt, that even a nightingale, a bird, uh, nightingale is a bird uh, who sings very beautifully and its uh, voice is also echoing wherever the, the bird is singing. So <clears throat> it is also having very sweet voice while he says, no nightingale did ever chaunt, that even not even a nightingale did ever chant, sing such kind of voice as the lady was singing so much beautiful. 
then he says more welcome notes to weary bands you know nightingale is also uh, singing such kind of songs which are the welcoming songs so here he is making a comparison between the voice of the lady and the voice of the nightingale that nightingale was not even <coughs> uh, singing so much beautiful a uh, so much uh, beautiful welcoming song she also doesn't uh, sing that kind of song as the lady was singing right so he says of travelers in some shady haunt among arabian seats he is talking about the travelers who are the wanderers in a deserts so arabian saints uh, are actually mentioning about the deserts he is talking about those person <coughs> who is actually uh, uh, staying at a particular place for listening the voice of nightingale so he is talking about those travelers who are the wanderers in the desert who actually listens the voice of uh, nightingale by standing on the arabian sands by standing on the arabian uh, deserts right next he says a voice so thrilling now here he is appreciating the voice of the lady uh, and uh, he is again emphasizing on the thing that the voice was so much thrilling it was never heard and the voice of also cuckoo it can also be uh, not heard every time so he says a voice so thrilling that the voice was so spectacular so beautiful uh, so amazing that it was never heard in spring time from the cuckoo bird and even you know the cuckoo bird is singing uh, is singing in the spring time so he is also making a comparison again between the voice of the lady and the voice of the cuckoo bird so he says in spring time from the cuckoo bird that even cuckoo bird also does not sing that much beautiful in spring sound uh, spring time as the lady was singing breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest hebrides and what does the cuckoo bird do hebrides as a uh, uh, island in the western coast of scotland okay <clears throat> so he says breaking the silence of the seas he's talking about the cuckoo bird that what is the cuckoo bird doing actually by the sound of itself it is just breaking the silence of the seas the song of the cuckoo bird is so much sound breaking that even uh, cuckoo bird cannot hum the better tune than the lady right so he says that breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest hebride farthest are the places which are situated very much away from a place very much far from a place so here he is talking about the hebrides island which is situated in the western coast of scotland so he says that the cuckoo bird where she uh, has actually been singing by sitting on the uh, island uh, a particular island uh, that was hebrides right so he is saying that even that uh, the cuckoo bird cannot hum a better tune the better sound as a lady was singing now here we are having the third stanza of the poetry that is will no one tell me what she sings perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old and happy far off things and battles long ago or is it more humble lay familiar matter of today some nature sorrow loss or pain that has been and may be again whatever the theme the maiden sing as if her song could have no ending so uh, in this stanza uh, william wordsworth is talking about that what kind of uh, themes uh, of uh, the lady's songs might be because he, uh, as i have told you that he was not understanding the language as a lady was singing in scots so he is just guessing and he is uh, just saying th some things like he is uh, making a uh, making some guesses that what kind of themes the lady might be singing so he says will no one tell me what she sings so he is she is asking uh, he is asking uh, here that will anyone tell wordsworth that what was the lady singing actually right so that's why he is using a question mark so he is asking the question that if there is anyone who will tell me what she was actually singing so he is here making the guesses perhaps then he say the seldom she was singing about the plaintive numbers flows for old and happy far off things so he is uh, the plaintive numbers are the sad numbers the sad tunes which are uh, very sorrowful and that was sung by the lady so he is making the first guess by saying that it might be the lady was singing uh, in uh, sad tune and she was uh, uh, singing about the so uh, sad things the unhappy things right 
So he is uh, again saying for old unhappy things, the things which have uh, remained in the past, she might be singing about that. She might be singing about uh, uh, her any uh, lover who has left her, who has deserted her. Then she says unhappy, the things which has not, uh, which were not good uh, uh, with her in the past, the things which are making her unhappy, and the far off things, the things which are. Uh, about to come, like he is also talking about the past and future in these two words, uh, for, for old and far off things, the things which are about to come in the future. So, she might be singing, she might be having that kind of uh, <coughs> uh, like uh, fear in her mind uh, for uh, these all all things. For So, he, uh, he is just making some guesses that uh, the, uh, these uh, may be the themes of the lady's song, right. So, he says, and battles long ago. And it might be she uh, was also singing about the battles, uh, which uh, will, uh, which has happened actually uh, in the past, right? Again, uh, he says, or is it more humble lay family matter of today? So he is saying that it might be that she is singing about the things which are very polite like very beautiful things she might be singing about any beautiful thing she might be uh, thinking uh, sorry singing about the very humble lay right uh, then he says familiar matter of today and it also might be that she is uh, just uh, memorizing some moments of her family and then she is uh, saying that she might be singing about a family matter who is actually in the present whatever is happening with her about her family about her parents about uh, uh, the ch uh, children she might be having or about her husband. So, uh, here the poet is talking about the familiar matter, the matter which are actually related to the family life of the lady. Then he says, some natural sorrow, loss or pain and then uh, he is saying that it might be that she is having some natural sorrows, she is has been suffering from any natural sorrow which uh, actually comes in everyone's life. Then he says loss or pain, she has, she uh, might have deserted her lover or uh, the loved love uh, her, has deserted her, she might had any breakup with any uh, friend of her, okay. So, he is talking about and the pain, pain uh, it may be like the pain of losing someone, the death of someone, she might be thinking about that and she is just uh, like uh, making a lamentation in the lyrics of her words. That has been and maybe again, okay. So, the things uh, he is just guessing that the things which has been, the things which has uh, uh, has about uh, about to be, jo cheeze, uh, hone wali hai, and he is also talking about the maybe again, thikhe? the things which are uh, going to happen again now. Whatever the theme the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending. So, he says that whatever the theme the maiden sang, the theme he is uh, just he has just mentioned all these things here the whatever the theme whatever kind of theme the lady was having the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending she was singing so much beautiful as it uh, was seeming to the people who were observing her as the poet was wo watching to her, uh, towards her so he was saying that whatever kind of themes uh, the lady's song was having she was singing so much beautiful uh, so much politely as if her song could have no ending, like her song will never ever finish in her life and he is just going to uh, listen this song again and again. So, here uh, are the some last lines of the poetry. I saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending. I listened motionless and still and as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bow, long after it was heard no more. So, here he is saying that where he exactly saw the lady, uh, I saw her singing at her work, she was actually singing at her work, uh, like you know whenever we are going to the work, we are just uh, indulged in our work, we even forget about the nature, we forget about the things, but still uh, we, uh, we uh, forget about the singing and all the musics which uh, are remaining in our hearts. But here the lady was doing her work, so she was in this way she was doing her two, uh, in this way she was doing two works. Like she was also enjoying her work by singing that song and she was also harvesting the field. And over the sickle bending, sickle bending means here like uh, whenever a person is harvesting the crop, she has to ba uh, bend a little that she or he has to bend a little and then harvest the crop in this way, right. So, she was also uh, cutting the grain and piling them on a uh, place. 
I listened motionless and still and he, again he says that he was motionless, he was not doing any activity and still he was, uh, still word has come from being peaceful. He just listened all of the song of the lady by standing on a place where he was not even moving a little and it was a peaceful uh, an environment at that time. And as I mounted up the hill, now he just listened that uh, the song of that lady uh, for some time and then he moved to, uh, towards uh, of uh, that highland. So he moved towards, he says I mounted up the hill, that he now he, uh, this was a time when he was about to move uh, from a particular place to another one. So he was just climbing up the hill now and he was about to leave that place. The music in my heart I bore long after it was heard no more. But here he regrets a little in these lines that even he says that the music in my heart I bore. That whenever we are uh, going <coughs> uh, from uh, any one place to another, so the voice of the lady that was increasing, the pitch of the uh, girl's voice was uh, heard no more at the last. Because as he was moving from one place to another, so the voice of the lady was decreasing and decreasing and in this way the vo uh, uh, voice of the lady stopped coming in the ears of the Wordsworth, right. So he says the music in my heart I bore but still the music of the lady was going inside the heart, uh, heart of uh, William Wordsworth. It was uh, a very soothing voice that it was making his heart very cheerful and he was thinking only about the voice, voice of the lady. At last he says, long after it was heard no more. And the voice of the lady, the song of the lady was heard no more after a particular time because he had moved from one place to another and he could hear her no more. So guys, I hope uh, you like my study material. If you find it uh, suitable for your exams, so please like, comment, share and subscribe our Guru KPO channel and visit our website GuruKPO.com and don't forget to like this video. Thank you. Thank you.